all of the uh, French speak. You know, these were all countries that at one time were colonial holdings of the French. That's Isn't correct. That, uh -huh. That's correct. That's what, that was why Sekoture, mm -hmm. you know, had to quarrel with them. He refused to accept mm -hmm. that kind of, uh, you know, when De Gaulle, mm -hmm. you know, said, okay, we'll give you independence, but this is this, what you mm -hmm. have to do. Only Sekoture said, no way. Mm -hmm. And the French got mad and even took all the electric poles in Guinea when they left, you mm -hmm. know, to punish them. Okay, so that's that's another obstacle when mm -hmm. you go into those countries to do business. Mm -hmm. The French has a way of stopping you mm -hmm. because a they do not want you know those countries to threaten their financial interests, and mm -hmm. secondly they do not want particular Anglophone mm -hmm. countries, you know, mm -hmm. like United States and and Britain mm -hmm. to have influence in those countries mm -hmm. because of commercial reasons. And so, so that's when, an we, obstacle. when we say that uh, Africa is open for business, we are saying in a real sense in almost every section of Africa, with, uh, with the exception of those areas that are controlled by colonial France. Mm -hmm. is, is that what we're saying? That, that that's you, correct. You can't way. expect to go there and, and be successful. That's correct. If, if the French don't don't want you to be successful. Uh, absolutely, mm -hmm. Ab absolutely. So that's important for people mm -hmm. to, to understand. Mm -hmm. You know, now you have the, the Chinese, mm -hmm. uh, the Indians, mm -hmm. uh, the Brazilians, mm -hmm. you know, having a whole lot of, you know, uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, cuts in mm -hmm. the African business. Mm -hmm. You know, today, uh, China is the third largest, you know, uh, trading partner of Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, the United States still number one, mm -hmm. uh, the European Union number two, mm -hmm. you know, China number three. Mm -hmm. And then you have Brazil coming in there, mm -hmm. you have India coming in there. Mm -hmm. And of course, in order to, to, to counterbalance, you know, uh, what you call the European domination mm -hmm. of African business, you have what you call the BRIC countries today. That's mm -hmm. Brazil, you know, uh, uh, mm -hmm. Russia, mm -hmm. India, and China. Mm -hmm. BRIC, B-R-I-C. Mm -hmm. These countries Brazil, now okay. have formed a block of their own, mm -hmm. you know, to do business in Africa and other places mm -hmm. to counterbalance you know, the mm -hmm. United States and European mm -hmm. you know, address who've had a majority, mm -hmm. you know, a, a interest in African business. Mm -hmm. And recently, you know, they invited South Africa, mm -hmm. you know, to become part of that, you know, group. For the mm -hmm. last meeting they had in Beijing, you know, sometime mm -hmm. last month, uh, to the early part of this month, you know, mm -hmm. South Africa was invited. Mm -hmm. And amongst the, those four countries, mm -hmm. they're almost uh, half of the world's population. Mm -hmm. And that's a very and that big market big there. Market, you know, China, really is. Uh -huh. China is about 1.3, 1.5 billion people. Mm -hmm. India is about a billion people. Mm -hmm. uh, Brazil is almost 300. And all of those countries could be open for investment. That's you, correct. Uh -huh. And those countries too mm -hmm. are open, are open for investments. Mm -hmm. They are called the emerging emerging markets. Mm -hmm. You know, most of these African economies are called mm -hmm. the frontier markets. Mm -hmm. uh, that is, countries that have you know the resources. Mm -hmm but lack the political and mm -hmm. economic stability. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're frontier, you know, uh, mm -hmm. countries. Countries. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So it's very important to understand that when you're going to Africa to do business, mm -hmm. you know, you have to look at, you know, these French-speaking countries, mm -hmm. you know, the Lusophone countries, mm -hmm. that's the countries that we are formerly, you know, a colony of Portugal, mm -hmm. that they're Lusophone countries, mm -hmm. Mozambique, you know, Cape Verde, Angola, you mm -hmm. know, Guinea-Bissau. Then and of course the Anglophone. And so in reality over the last minute and a half we have here mm -hmm. is that these colonial countries uh, are still financially as powerful as they were during the, during the uh, colonial days and independence really has not impacted uh, them at all. <laughs> the, the fact that these countries are independent, is that what we're saying? Abs absolutely, absolutely. That's why they say that a lot of the African countries are independent on paper, uh -huh. you know. But in reality, mm -hmm. you know, most of them are not because a lot of their economies mm -hmm. are still controlled by outside forces and, in, indirectly. And, and of course, you would, you, you would encourage, uh, or at least you would advise, uh, individuals who wish to be successful mm -hmm. not to deal with those countries that are still financially controlled by the uh, former uh, mother countries. It, it was, well, that would be stretching it uh -huh. because... because uh, I can say that 90% of Senate the countries in still, Africa uh, still, are still control, have uh, exactly a lot of their economies uh, indirectly tied uh -huh. to former colonial powers. But some more mm -hmm. specifically uh, than others. That's is correct. That some, some more, you know, mm -hmm. uh -huh. apart from um, South Africa or mm -hmm. Nigeria, you know, mm -hmm. most of the other countries really mm -hmm. still have a whole lot of dependence mm -hmm. on their former colonial colonial. And, and of course, Dr. Madhu, let masters. me thank you for that information. Let mm -hmm. me encourage our audience to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Congress.
Thank you and good morning.